I swear, this was an accident. <laughs> I meant to stop it on a cool looking image of a zombie because there's a lot of topics and I was going to let the trailer play while we're discussing some of the topics, but AMC's hit or miss whether or not they'll pull your video or block your video in 180 countries. So I figured I'm not even going to waste time. I don't have time to re-edit stuff right now. I'm really in the, the middle of um, doing a lot of work on something coming for the channel. So I just don't have the time. So we're not going to play any full videos. If you want to see the World Beyond Comic-Con trailer, look it up on YouTube. Or Fear the Walking Dead Season 6 trailer, look it up on YouTube. We're going to go over the hottest uh, bulletin points, the hottest news and reveals that have popped off. And if you guys want to discuss it further, show some interest and maybe tomorrow we'll do a little live stream getting your feedback as well as mine a little more in depth. Now that I'm looking at this image, I will say this is absolutely stupid. It is so dumb and silly. Do you know how heavy that wrench is? Do you have any idea how ridiculous that would be as a weapon, and it is a weapon. Later in the trailer, he, it's the bottom end is sharpened, so he uses it. That You can tell people in Hollywood who's never worked a day in their life comes up with shit like this. They're like, yeah, let's take this 80-pound weapon and throw it in a backpack and have the skinniest little scrawniest kid use it like it. Holy shit, get him an ice pick. Done. <laughs> you know, like lightweight. Anyhow efficient right in the eyeball or the temple every time anyway let's go with my list of the hottest fire reveals coming out to kick it off well actually you know what to kick it off doomsday kingdom is doing fan freaking tastic if you don't know about it check it up at on indiegogo everyone's getting a lot of freebies we unlocked already if we hit 10K, everyone's getting the ultimate package with five free prints, free bookmark, trading card. You guys, it's crazy. So go ahead and check out Indiegogo. It is on fire. The campaign is doing crazy good right now. So definitely massive thank you for that support. It is. This is just the beginning of a big story featuring zombies. If you are interested, check that out. Anyway, now let's get back to the Walking Dead stuff. I do want to kick this off with something that wasn't from Comic-Con, but it is kind of important if you're a Walking Dead fan. Robert Kirkman lost the lawsuit with AMC, and that's not the interesting bit because that just deals with money, you know, whether or not AMC is going to pay him more money or Frank Darabont, yada, yada, yada. That one might be a big deal if Darabont wins because that would actually really hurt the franchise money-wise, I would imagine. But one of the key pieces of information that came out with the lawsuit is that AMC or the walking dead is operating in the red and no one has gotten that participation payout for years now, since like 2018. So the walking dead franchise money wise, which is mind boggling is not doing well at all. <laughs> so I don't know how that's going to translate into what they got popped popping off. I mean, maybe that's why uh, World Beyond went from seeming like it was going to be this big, huge new series, and it's actually only two seasons. I think the reason for that is the interest. They can rate it. Not just rate it, but they can actually gauge the interest. And I can see that the interest just isn't there. I mean, it's really not. I went back and looked for a while at the stats and, and the views and the, the even the comments and how many people are positive to negative. And the amount of people interested is like a fraction of the amount of people interested in the main show. And that's just not looking good. You can't have, you know, two spinoffs that are just dragging along here. I mean, maybe you could. I don't know. It doesn't seem like it could they're in the red but all right so one one uh reveal the walking dead season 10 episode 16 will air october 4th and like we guessed it on this channel and a few others i would imagine it's going to be followed by world beyond so yes and this is what kind of disappoints me bums me out a little bit we're getting more of um more gimmicks with amc and the walking dead and it's kind of for me, it's it's just bumming me out of the whole franchise because uh, it's not like they they did this 
for what's the best thing to do for uh, the show, the the fan base. They did this for the ratings. This is another Negan cliffhanger gimmick. Uh, They held back on episode 16 from the fans just so they can tack it on to the premiere because they know it's a lot easier for people to pay attention to the premiere date if it follows the finale and to actually actively try to watch it if it follows the finale. If it was on a date by itself, many of you would probably be like, eh, I'll, I'll, I'll check up on it, but it wouldn't be, oh, I'm already watching it, you know what I mean? Anyway, so October 4th, also season 10 is getting a record bump in episode numbers. They ordered six more additional episodes, and at first I was freaking thrilled. However, by listening to a couple things, there was something I had pulled here. Oh yeah, look at that. They're making it. Hey, Ezekiel fans, here's a 3-0, scale Ezekiel. Anyhow, uh, this, you can follow her. Her name's uh, at uh, Kirsten Akuna. I know I'm going to mess up her last name. I follow her here, but listen to uh, what she has to say. She got a little bit of information here. We're getting an extra six episodes of The Walking Dead. What does that mean? Does that mean that the season 10 finale is no longer the actual season finale? Does that mean that we're getting a shorter season 11? Uh, Quick answers, no and no. So the extra episodes are going to be just that extra episodes. Uh, We'll get them sometime in early 2021. And my understanding is that they will have no impact whatsoever on season 11. So just two quick things to keep in mind there. All right. So I looked at a few more um, just quotes from people behind the scenes, and it looks like this is trash. We're just getting six episodes so AMC can make money off of the uh, uh, ad revenue with the episodes. It's most likely going to be something along the lines of the webisodes. Now, for hardcore Walking Dead fans, I know a lot of us, you know, I'm in and out sometimes based on uh, just whether I'm feeling it or not. But I know hardcore fans are just going to love getting anything within the world. And that's great. But I feel like this is just going to be webisode stuff where it it matters not in, in the grand scheme of things. Like they're not bringing in hardcore stuff that's going to touch base with Michonne or Rick or uh, the Whispers. I mean, it can tap into it, and I think it needs to in a way. Like, for example, someone's going out for some scouting runs, so they kill a Whisper or two, and this takes place in between, like, episode 3 and 4 of season, you know, 11 or 10, yada, yada, yada. I don't think it's going to be just that. I do think it is more along the lines of filler webisode, uh, with a camouflaged, oh, this is like this is actually part of the season more so than it really is. You feel me? Anyway, if you're excited for that, let me know. I will gladly eat my words if it comes out and the six episodes are actually like you know important real episodes and they're not more like just flimsy webisodes. I'll eat my words because that's what I want. Hell yes. But I just feel like this is a gimmick for AMC to pump out cheaper episodes uh, just to get some sort of ad revenue pumped back into uh, the uh, financial uh, bloodline. Anyhow, blood flow. Anyway, so The Walking Dead, Robert Kirkman has, and this comes from The Walking Dead's Twitter, Robert Kirkman has confirmed he is very involved in the Rick Grimes movies. And he talks with Andrew Lincoln frequently, and he says he's committed to making it great and notes production got delayed due to the pandemic. That's all we got for now, but it's still on. I know a lot of people are predicting the Rick Grimes movies will be eventually canceled, and I'll be honest with you, that could be. However, there's no reason to. As long as you have someone, uh, an actor who's, Yeah, you know, I'll get to it, but he's in no rush. I mean, they don't need to rush to cancel it. Even if Andrew Lincoln's like, I want to take three more years off, fine. They don't need to cancel it. So I don't think, even if it was not something Andrew Lincoln's ready to do for the next two years, there's no rush to cancel it. You see what I'm saying? So it can sit on the back burner. Anyway, so Robert Kirkman says that we might one day see a follow-up 
to the Negan Lives. But for now, there are no plans. For those comic fans who were wondering, who were telling me, Ronnie, you're dumb. <laughs> he's just tricking us, bro. No, he's not. <laughs> I know... <sighs> Kirkman's a funny guy. He likes to do this off-the-wall, like, sarcastic shit. But the problem with that is people tend to, like hang on every word he says as if it's like for sure. Like he randomly said, uh, oh yeah, by the way, Negan lives. And then he openly admitted it meant nothing, but then it snowballed into being the title of the comic. So now everyone's running around saying, oh, we're getting a Clementine um, comic. We're getting a Clementine uh, character in the movie or fucking whatever. Bro, that don't mean shit. <laughs> He's dicking with you. Now, could there be a Clementine story? There should be because they would make money off that. It's a pre-existing character. It's a pre they have a pre-established fan base. It wouldn't make any sense not to make anything Clementine. So no matter what, there's eventually going to be something with Clementine, but I'm telling you right now. He just said it. It's just something he said. Anyway, uh, before we wrap Scott Gimple, and this is on their Twitter as well, Scott Gimple teased that the final five minutes of the Walking Dead Season 10 finale will take us to a whole different place. And it probably should since they're building up to the Commonwealth. I mean, I figured that's where we're going with it. But if they go somewhere really different with it, all right. All right. Also, uh, Season 11 is officially delayed to 2021. We all saw that one coming. And as rumored, The Walking Dead Season 6 will be more of an anthology series with episodes focused more on a limited amount of characters. Also, Lenny James and... Uh, um, oh, I didn't... Lenny James and... Let me look for... It's Coleman. It's the guy who plays, uh, holy shit, what's his name? The guy who plays what's his name that was friends with Madison. I think his last name's uh, uh, Domingo, if I got that right, Coleman Domingo. Anyway, they will both be directing episodes. That doesn't matter as far as uh, the actual story goes. But Scott Gimple confirms that there will be multiple timelines for Fear the Walking Dead Season 6. Um, yeah. So multiple timelines, and it'll be an anthology series. Now, I quit watching Fear a season or two ago, and I have zero interest in returning, but there's that information for anyone else who is um, kind of curious. Also, they have also shown images of Dwight and Sherry. They will reunite in uh, season six. I'm glad Austin Emilio is getting some work, and he's doing something there. Uh, I still don't have any real interest. You guys let me know if it's good. I'll binge it after it airs probably. All right, Scott Gimple teases. They're looking into making, and this is something I called uh, two years ago. Now, keep in mind, things are slow moving when it comes to Hollywood. So we knew this was kind of coming, but it doesn't happen like a month down the line. So Scott Gimple teases. They are looking into making limited single character spinoffs. Not a whole show that will focus on the onset of the apocalypse. Um, eyes, who would you guys want to see? And that's a question that they put out on Twitter. Now, here's the thing. If this was season three, I would like, yeah, hell yeah, let's see some Daryl Dixon, you know? But because the actor has aged out of that part of the timeline and he would have to cut his hair, obviously he can't look, and he's never going to cut his hair as far as we know for this timeline, he always looks the same. I don't see how that would work for d characters like Daryl, like Carol. I'm not sure. I mean, maybe they can do something wig-wise. I, I don't know. But Daryl just looks different. He packed on some weight. And not even like fat weight. He packed on some muscle. He buffed up a bit. So it wouldn't really... It's, it's too far out. Now, this is something that we have discussed on this channel or, or predicted well ahead of time that they would not only use characters we know, but maybe side characters, new characters, new situations. The idea is keeping the world alive by any means necessary, whether it's the original show, a spinoff, a limited series, a limited special event, meaning they have a, a one movie uh, I don't know why they wouldn't call it a movie, but just do like the Walking Dead movie series where they can come out with, uh, you know, these different limited events. They can I think it would fit better if they have official high, high quality, high, um, uh, high budgeted movie events 
and then the limited series they can do the same timeline for the same length for a movie but again the budget isn't as high maybe it follows characters so they don't have to take so much of a risk i think that's a good way to distinguish them because if you had big budgeted movies like the rick movie and then you had a smaller it's it's a movie length but it's it's a you know limited series thing if you compare the two you're going to be like wow look at the budget on this and look at the scope of this and then you compare it to the so i think it'd be smart if they definitely separate it and only call it a movie where it's a high budget and a big spectacle. But when it is a smaller limited thing, make this uh, type of walking dead universe where you can kick out whatever series you're running, but also something that's not the webisode. Cause even though the webisodes kind of has a silly name to it and they were kind of fun in the beginning, they are, they are kind of, I don't know, they have a, this cheap feel to them, even the way it sounds. Anyway, I think there was a couple other articles. I, I left some of this stuff so you guys can read it, but we were hitting on pretty much the high notes. We know Maggie and Negan are not going to get along and there's going to be some friction there. Uh, if you guys have any other additional questions, yeah, that's it. I don't want to sit here and, and beat everyone in the head. If you want my thoughts and opinions about the trailer, just real quick, I wasn't really blown away by the world beyond trailer. It looks like a polished CW event. It's not really my cup of tea. I'm going to watch the premiere though, because I would love to be wrong and be like, yo, that's for me. This feels like a boardroom said we need the, uh, we need a younger demographic. So let's go here for it. It doesn't feel like someone sat down and said, bro, I got an idea for an incredible movie. This feels like AMC operating in the red with the walking dead. And now we know they are. And they say, yo, we need to cinch that demographic. And to help you understand why they need to clinch a younger demographic, that's who's online. That is who is blowing stats away on the internet. You know, you're not looking at your 40, 50, 60 year old demographic as constantly. The younger generations are constantly plugged into the internet. So when shit goes viral, when they're doing their uh, viral marketing and yada, 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 they need to hit that demographic. It's important. It's not the only thing that's important, but it is important. And that's just one aspect. Don't get it twisted and think that's the only thing we're um, focused on. But that's just one aspect of something. So now that we see the bigger picture, this does come off as, as a, a boardroom thing where it said, oh, we're in the red. How do we do it? We need you know to build up the fan base, younger demographic. Let's pull in char younger characters and do this type of story. And then when it was, was revealed or they did research and they saw it wasn't going to do as good, they said, okay, we'll make it a, a two-season limited event, 20 episodes, bada bing, bada boom. I don't know. I think what you you need to really do, AMC, is story first. And this goes with everything. Absolutely everything. Story first. The story bows to nothing. No age demographic, no agenda shit. The story bows to You give the people a good story and they will come out their pockets. End of story. You know? And, and that's it. That's all you need to do. I'll give you one hint. The Walking Dead in the fucking snow start there for a change you know come out your pockets anyway doomsday kingdom on indiegogo i know the story right now takes place in july which is kind of neat july 4th in america is kind of like independence day hoorah but in this world july 5th is the day it all went wrong you know so we will eventually see snow but we're we're in july right now in doomsday kingdom oh and that's another thing if you guys read Doomsday Kingdom, if you get to, uh, let's say, 25 pages in, you're going to see a panel. Some of you already read that. This panel, you're going to see the character we talked about years ago being the bounty hunter, the Doomsday Cowboy, the Doomsday Bounty Hunter dressed as a cowboy. I watched Fear, Fear's friggin' trailer today, and I saw this cowboy who's a bounty hunter for the, the girl, what's her name, Virginia? And he he's... He has been tasked with finding and killing Morgan if he isn't already dead, which means he's alive because that would be a stupid story element to find him, but you find him dead. That would be stupid. Anyway, anyhow, so I just think it's a little friggin' odd <laughs> that 
It seems like every friggin' time they come out with a reveal, it's something that we've already done. I'm gonna shut up. I know I'm making some Fear fans angry. Here's some secret un uh, upgrades that we already unlocked. We have the cover print for issue 5, cover for issue 1 and issue 2. You guys get those automatically for free. And then we have this bookmark here for free. Here's one of the covers. Look at this. Oh, James did a great job putting this together. Check out Doomsday Kingdom on Indiegogo. I'm going to get going now. Goodbye. Oh, yeah. Thoughts and opinions in the comments. I'm done talking. It's your turn.